How to make better classifiers. Well, we have a few techniques at our disposal. We can try out a bunch of preprocessing tools. We can do feature engineering, and we have lots of models. There's hyperparameter tuning as well. And if you're clever, you probably are also doing some good old thresholding at the end. And while all of these techniques on their own are, like, totally fine, there is one technique that, in my mind, just stands above all of this, also because it's just such a sensible thing to do. And this technique is something called variable thresholds. In terms of scikit-learn features, it is also a technique that is relatively advanced. You are going to need a lot of the more modern and nitty-gritty features of scikit-learn, but the intuition behind this idea is just so solid that it's well worth the effort. So in this video, I'm going to first explain the intuition and also a little bit about the math that's behind all of this, after which I'm going to conclude by showing you the code to run a proper pipeline that does variable thresholds. Now, in order to explain variable thresholds, it helps to have a clear example, and I'm going to go with a fraud use case. And let's explain the setup of that. I have some features that are related to fraud, and let's just uh, call that our big array X over here. You can imagine some account information being in here, and uh, these would be features that should help me make a prediction about whether or not a transaction is fraudulent. Then I have my labels, that's an array of zeros and ones. But there's this other array over here that is denoted by the amount. That is to say, how big was the transaction? And you can definitely imagine that uh, some transactions are bigger and some transactions are smaller. Well, from here, uh, what you can do is you can make a machine learning pipeline. And there are lots of ways of doing that, actually. But the thing that I am going to assume is that you do have some sort of machine learning pipeline that allows me to uh, make some sort of a probabilistic prediction. I'm also going to assume that we have a machine learning pipeline over here that is calibrated. And that's important because that will allow me to put a little bit more confidence in the interpretation of the number that comes out over here. Something between 0 and 1. And the closer that we are to 1, the more confident that we should be that we're dealing with fraud. Now, what I'm also going to be assuming is that we have some sort of a custom business metric. And the straightforward thing to do here is to maybe pick some sort of a threshold somewhere on this zero, one axis, such that our custom business metric, on average, has the best performance. In this custom business metric, you can assume that we get maybe some sort of stipend for every good transaction that we pass through, but we have to subtract some sort of penalty if we let something fraudulent in. But it's also kind of likely that the amount of the penalty that we get, that that's actually somewhat related to the amount of the transaction as well. Bigger transactions that are fraudulent are worse if they get in than small amounts. Oh, but that's actually kind of a hint. Because you could wonder, if we care about the size of the amount over here with regards to our metric, then maybe what we can do is we can say, well, the amount that's at stake, maybe we can use that to come up with some sort of a variable threshold. Think of it this way. If we see a transaction for $1, well, Sure, it could theoretically be fraudulent, but if this amount went through, well, we can kind of maybe care less. But if we ever see a transaction of $20 million, let's say, oh, wait, then maybe we want to be more strict. Maybe then we want to be more certain, so to say. A lot of that would depend on the shape of this business metric, but hopefully intuitively you can already argue that it does make a lot of sense to distinguish between different thresholds given different transaction amounts in this particular use case. The setup that I just explained gives us a interesting way to think about a decision that needs to be made. There is going to be a point in time when our machine learning system needs to decide whether or not to say something is fraudulent, give it the positive label, or if it isn't. But the interesting thing here is that we can actually kind of quantify the benefit or cost of making this decision. Again, we have a machine learning model, so that means that we have some sort of a probability value that the model emits, that this is the value that goes out, effectively. Well then, if we make a positive prediction, then we could say, well, the model is well calibrated, so there's some probability p, and given some sort of a business metric or some sort of cost, we could say, well, p times the cost for getting a true positive, that's part of the equation here, but we should add to that 1 minus p times the cost of getting a false positive. 
again, I am assuming some sort of a business metric, and you can also see how this business metric might depend on the transaction amount, so to say, but even without a transaction amount, this is a very general statement. This quantity that I've described over here is basically the expected value of making a positive decision, given this probability that the model outputs that I'm assuming is calibrated. And we can do that for making a positive decision, but we can also do that for making a negative one. There's a cost of having a true negative, and a probability that's associated with that is 1 minus p, but there's also a chance that we make a false negative. Now, a really cool thing at this point is that I can actually rewrite the math a little bit here. And what does this equality mean? Well, everything on the left-hand side over here, that's for the positive decision, and everything on the right-hand side over here, that's for the negative decision. I've just made both of these two statements equal to each other. But the main observation is that if there is an actual equality here, that means that either decision would give us the same cost or the same benefit put differently. In other words, if we're interested in figuring out a threshold probability where on one side we want to make a positive decision and on the other side it'd be better to make a negative one, then we have to take this equation and solve it for p. And as luck would have it, by doing just a little bit of math, we have a closed form solution for the optimal threshold. And what's more, all these cost functions that you see over here, well, they are just written down as kind of an abstract function. But you can imagine if we have a custom business metric, especially if we have one that depends on the amount, then we can also just effectively derive the optimal threshold given a cost matrix or in fact a transaction amount. And this is something I would like to just showcase in code, because the next step, of course, is going to be that we're going to build ourselves a classifier that is able to make an optimal decision based on the probability value that the machine learning model emits and the transaction amount at the same time. It's able to combine both of those two things. To make it clear that I didn't make any of that math up just now, you can actually repeat the same exercise by using SymPy inside of your notebook. The show notes have a link to this particular notebook, so you can do the exercise yourself. But the main thing that's important is that we do indeed have a closed form solution that we can go ahead and use as a method to figure out what decision to make. Now, moving towards scikit-learn now, I've taken the liberty of implementing this business metric over here that's custom. True values go in together with predictions, as well as the amount column that I alluded to earlier. Inside of this function, I'm calculating true negatives, false negatives, false positives, and true positives. And then there's a chunk of business logic here that's using this information to calculate statistics that I'm interested in. For example, I'm interested in quantifying how good it is that I accept legitimate transactions. And I'm also quantifying how bad it is that I'm accepting fraudulent transactions. Some of this depends on the amount. Some of that depends on whether or not there's a true negative. But there's also just some information that needs to come out of the business context. And that's declared in these variables above over here. There's just some sort of a variable that I need that tells me what kind of commission I might get from doing a transaction proper. And similarly, there's also a cost associated to accepting fraud and refusing legitimate transactions. And these are all weighed differently, and you're definitely going to need some sort of business context to get some appropriate values in. But one thing to observe just right out of the bat is that I am able to come up with a custom metric. So we have found our way to calculate the cost for a false positive and a true negative, and we can use our business rules for that. But one exercise that's actually kind of cute that we can do now is we can also come up with some sort of a function that just tells us what the optimal decision threshold is going to be. There's a bunch of logic inside of this function that I'm reusing down below over here. I have some base settings that I'm using that's just going to calculate some sort of an optimal threshold for me. But what I can also do is I can change some of the figures that go in. And the main thing that I just want to show with the chart below over here is that you can definitely see that on the x-axis we've got some sort of a amount. And given a specific amount, there might be a very different threshold that we want to keep on using. And that threshold over here is for the base configuration. I've got a different curve for different business metrics over here. But the main observation really is that we can actually map the amount onto a threshold. And that also means that we can wrap around a scikit-learn classifier that's going to use that information. So given that intuition of the variable threshold, let's now actually construct a 
classifier that knows how to deal with it. I have a variable threshold classifier class over here, and the way that it's set up is you have to pass a classifier. That's just a scikit-learn estimator that should be able to do the predict proba prediction. And there's also a variable threshold over here that you have to pass, and this is going to be the function that determines, given the amount in a transaction, what should the optimal threshold be. Now, there's no need to train this system because everything should be self-contained into this variable threshold function to get this to work. But when I make a prediction over here, you can see that I pass x as I would normally. Now, when I call predict, as you can see over here, I'm going to need features for predicting, but I will also need the amount. Because with that amount, I can actually call that variable threshold function as shown earlier. Now, given this threshold, by the way, as well as this proba value, uh, the combination of the two will allow me to actually make the optimal decision, so to say. So that's the logic that's really happening in here. So that's the class. Let's uh, now talk about this object. I have this estimator over here that's a logistic regression that I trained beforehand, and I am passing it the variable threshold function that I just showed you before. This should be enough to have a variable classifier, and I can use my custom business metric function over here to uh, properly make some predictions. And this is where something interesting is going to happen. I calculated some sort of a business score over here, and I have a print statement down below that tells me that I've got some quantifiable benefit. I define some constants in the beginning. Some of them would reduce money, some of them would gain money. But I can see over here that if I were to believe this business metric, and note, I'm doing this on a test set, not a train set, then it seems that we get this value out. So that feels like it's a pretty high number and that's nice, but let's compare it to just running logistic regression as you would normally. Then we see a figure that's also pretty high, but it is just a smidge lower than what you see over here. And again, the exact value of this number depends a lot on the configuration of the system, how much benefit do you gain from doing a non-fraudulent example, and what's the harm with doing a proper fraudulent one. But I will make the case that if this were, let's say, a daily figure, then just a realization that you can apply variable thresholds, that seems to be about 5,000, give or take, euros or dollars a day in terms of benefit. And if we assume over 300 days a year, you can also see how this is easily going to value over $1 million a year. And again, the only reason why this works is because we're able to be creative. You can take scikit-learn components as is, and with that you can do very valuable things, but at some point it also helps to just be a little bit creative. You really have to give yourself this creative freedom to maybe build your own custom class in order to add these extra features. And if you really wanted to do this properly, I also hope that you can acknowledge that maybe metadata routing, as well as model calibration, are kind of nice advanced topics to know enough about because they do allow you to do things like this. So if you've learned anything from this series of videos, what I really do hope is that you're able to grant yourself just enough creative freedom because when you think outside the box, that's when real benefits can start to emerge. It's really not so much about knowing the best algorithm, it's really more about looking at scikit-learn and acknowledging that it has amazing Lego bricks that you can use to build very intelligent systems. And yeah, those intelligent systems might be able to uh, save you about $100 million a year, give or take.